Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Papa's Workshop. These are for Adam, Brady, Luke, and Brenna. But we got to check in with the assistant, of course. Hold on. Well, there's my Molly. She's sleeping under the bench. Always a close at hand. Would you like a little treat? There she goes. She works hard for those. You ready to go to work, girl? All right. All right. Today we're going to talk about measuring and layout. Uh, those, you start a project, you have to, to have to lay it out and measure out the board. So there's a lot of there's a lot of tools for measuring and marking. Of course, the most obvious one is a tape measure. Uh, these come in different sizes, different lengths. This is a 30 foot, the 16 foot. Uh, this is a 16 foot. This I think is only a 10 foot. Uh, I tend to like in the workshop the ones that lock by themselves. Uh, so they, they're pretty handy and I like the smaller one because I don't usually have anything in the workshop that's 30 feet long. Uh, so these are nice. Uh, one of the problems with the self-locking ones is like this one is that after a time they don't lock as well. Uh, see it sort of locks but it's kind of touchy. Uh, that's the, the, the brake mechanism in there gets the, all the sawdust and dirt on it and you have to take it apart and clean it uh, but eventually they just kind of wear out. Uh, the other kind has uh, got a lock like this one. See, it doesn't stay in, but you you gotta you gotta press this there to lock it. And those are much firmer locks. Uh, this one happens to also be digital. Uh, uh, I don't use it much, but that's kind of a kind of a neat feature if you were measuring uh, long distances. Uh, but like I said, they, they, the locking ones lock harder, but you've got an extra step to do that. So I tend to tend to like this. And then there's ones like this. This has the, the lock on it, uh, but it's, it's in inches and metric. So you got both. So you can get these in metric only, or like this one's a combination uh, of it. So that's the simplest form of measuring. But you can also have uh, rulers, of course. So there's a 12 inch, a 3 foot, and a 2 foot. They're kind of nice for laying out stuff. Uh, I like to use my little 6 inch. This is a 4 square because it has, uh, they're all, it's all inch, but each, uh, each surface has got a different graduation. This is 8 inch marked off in eighth inches and this is marked off in sixteenth of an inch and then you got thirty seconds and sixty fourths and I also like this marking on the end here so if you uh, wanted to measure how high that up that was you would uh, let me flip this around so you can see it measure like that so you can see how high up that was that's easier than than that, so that I, I use this all the time. Uh, but you've got other that the old-fashioned uh, before the tape measures came in the rule. You had this kind of a a tape measure, and uh, what's kind of nice about these is that they have a. This end. Let me get this all the way out. You've got this, so you can actually use this to measure the inside of something. Uh, if you're making a box, and you're going to measure from corner to corner on the inside to it to make sure it's square. That that measurement should be exactly square. Uh, these work good because you can shorten it and. Uh, do whatever you need as long as it's within the range of your adjustment on the end. Uh, so these work really well. Not quite pocket size, but almost. Uh, here is a 12-inch uh, a version of that. 
this is pocket size. Uh, so first you flip it this way, flip it that way, and then you've also got your adjustment out here uh, as a hook rule. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Uh, this is pretty old, so it's a little hard to read in some places, but uh, they're pretty nice. Um, you've also got uh, gauges like this that measure the thickness between these two or between these two, uh, or you also on the outside, if you're measuring inside of a pipe or something, and then you read the scale here. Uh, I use uh, this little plastic, uh, this is called a dial caliper, uh, but the same idea, you measure between these two or between these two for in something inside, and this particular one reads out in, uh, uh, in inches, but in, in you know, point oh one of an inch or in sixty fourths of an inch, uh, that takes some getting used to the sixty fourths. Uh, but uh, you, if you're looking to make sure the thickness of two boards is the same or that kind of thing, this works really well. You can get more precision. Uh, this is a precision dial caliper. Um, I, I use this just when I, I have something really precise uh, when I'm doing the machines or, or so forth. Uh, don't want to drop this one. That plastic one is a little, little uh, it's cheaper and it's, it's just as accurate for woodworking. I mean, wood moves, so whatever it is one day isn't going to be the same the next. So uh, getting it down to, uh, I mean, you can see uh, easily a half of a 64th. So I really kind of like that for those those kinds of things. Uh, and this is really precise if you need to measure the thickness of something. Uh, these are really for machines, machining. Uh, you can also get rulers like this. It's got every everything's got a different reading on it, different scale on it. Uh, it's just all sorts of of tools with as rulers this one is uh, you can actually make it a, a 12 inch uh, you can make it a t-square I mean it's just all sorts of uh, things like that here's one for uh, measuring the depth of a hole so this just down and you can measure the you know in in a hole uh, so that's kind of nice then you got your squares. This one has a ruler, but it's on this. Uh, so this is 90 degrees, and, and, and it's adjustable for how far in you want to go. So a lot of times, if you want to mark something that's, say, two inches in, you can put it against the board like this, and then mark that point and mark it with a pencil. I don't know if I got enough hands to do this up in the air, but so you go like that. Uh, so that's handy. And then you've got this also got a 45, so you can make a 45 line. And they come in different sizes. This is a little one. Uh, they come one with the, this got a six inch ruler. They come with a 12 inch ruler and you can get even bigger rulers. Um, this is a square that's not adjustable. Uh, but it's at a perfect 90 out here and out here. This is a modern version. Here's a, here's a more of an antique version. Uh, again, 90, but it also has this part right here is 45. Uh, I like this, this one here is dedicated 45. And uh, this is an antique, but it is right on the money as far as being at 45. And uh, I use it a lot. Any, anytime I'm marking uh, miters and so forth, I use this. It works really well. Um, then you've got you know bigger squares like this. It's got a, a lip on it that you could put against the against the board to mark it. And uh, these have a, a lot of uses. You can. Uh, it's got different angles. 
here you can start from this one point and you can you can mark the angles as you go out um, so it's it, it's uh, see this is in half degree uh, degree increments or one degree increments all the way up so you can use this as a as a compass uh, there's just all sorts of things on this that that uh, are pretty useful um, then you've got the, these squares if you've got a bigger bigger thing to mark and these have a lot of useful information on this too this is more for construction it's got rafter information and stair information the same as that other one uh, but those are pretty useful if you're going to do angles you need to measure be able to measure angles this is a simple simple miter gauge that reads out the numbers here this these are inexpensive uh, nowadays you can get these like this one and this is digital and uh, and that's these are not terribly expensive either uh, so that works really well um, then you want to maybe mark angles you've got these gauges here this is a small one and you can lock it into whatever angle you want and then do you know both sides this is a bigger version of that same same thing you can make them all the way flush like this or you can extend it up whichever I like the ones that have the lock either at the end or flush like that so that you can flip it uh, some of them have a big wing nut and then it won't let you lay it down uh, so that's what I like those for and these are for for marking uh, marking gauges come in a lot of different varieties here's a uh, an antique marking gauge and it has two two little pins and they're just adjustable separately see that one so it's got two locks on it so the reason it has two is so if you're going to do a mortise and tendon and you want to mark that square hole you would mark you would set the gauge for one one edge and then the, the gauge for the other edge so you could have that setting and then just flip it and do it and you can I don't know if you can see the marks on that from when that was done um, this one actually has two pins and a one pin this two this second pin is adjustable with this uh, with this separately so you can set the actual get your chisel out and set the width of those two pins and then set the distance from the fence uh, and then you would just mark that on there and these are these are done with um, these have little sharp points that you have to keep sharp uh, and you just kind of lean it and you just drag it like that and it makes it makes the lines I probably can't see that on there um, so those are nice uh, this is a homemade this is just a homemade one that you just uh, you know, undo the lock and then uh, lock it back in just a little cam that's in there um, here's a modern version of it I like to use this uh, this has a, a flat blade on it. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so you can keep that sharp and then adjust with this dial. I can adjust where that fence is and then mark it. And this acts like a knife. As I'm going across, it acts like a knife cutting that. Uh, so that I like this is what I use pretty much all the time and you can get a double blade for this one as well uh, not adjustable but it, it's a fixed width here's a Stanley butt gauge these were made uh, really just for making uh, 
the mortises for a for a hinge. So it's got two two little knives. It's got this little knife here, and then this one here. And uh, they were really made for uh, marking the thickness, the, the width of the hinge, and then the depth of the hinge. And that's pretty much they're dedicated for doing. But it it's a marking gauge, uh, just like the other. And see, oh, you got other things, other straight edges. You could have a little T square. Uh, that's kind of like these. There's a bigger version of these. Um, like I said before, you. It's nice to be able, if you're making a box, to measure corner to corner on the inside. You can also measure on the outside, but sometimes with you got your you're clamping it up, the clamps are in the way, and you can't really get to the outside. So that uh, this this ruler works well for that, but also you can get a, something like this. Uh, you supply the wood. It's just these little two little clips, and I can loosen that and adjust the depth of of this. And see, I've got a point at each end, and uh, you have sticks of different lengths depending on what you're working on, and you can. So you lock that in place with one and then try it to the other and see if it fits. If it's got, if it won't fit or if it's got too much slop, you know, you've got to squeeze your box a little bit. Um, so those work pretty well. Uh, you need a compass to mark circles. Uh, they come in bigger sizes as well. Um, a lot of times I will just use this little simple these are inexpensive uh, circle guides, but I can use that just for a little radius on the corner of a board. If I want to round it, I can just trace that on there like that. So that works uh, pretty good. Then you can get, if you've got really big circles, you can get something like this. There's a little compass that I can adjust on the length. This is, again, you supply the, you supply the stick and uh, you move these around either with so you plant that and make make your circle. So that works really good. Uh, curves are another thing. You know, we got that the the circle gauge, but sometimes you got something really big. Well, this is uh, this little stick here and the string. Simple to simple to make, but if I pull that string like a bow, now I've got a, a nice curve. That I can trace, and it and it stays in place. Um, so those are handy. And again, you supply the you, you make this yourself. It's easy to do. Uh, you can make this board tapered, thick thick at one end, and thinner at the other. And then it's not a symmetrical curve. It it kind of it's stiffer at the bottom, so it doesn't curve as much. But it curves more later. So you can get different shapes just by changing the, the shape of this board. Um, so that's really nice. You can also get, uh, you can get French curves in all different sizes. And, and then this is a flexible ruler that you can, you can trace something on this, but it also is a ruler. Uh, so that works pretty well. One of the best measuring tools, uh, one of the best layout tools, if, you, if you're going to make uh, a cabinet or something or multiple cabinets, is just a plain old stick. These are called a story stick. And you mark out from one end as your reference end, you're set like how high the drawers are going to be where the first drawer starts well, the top of that drawer, the bottom of the next, and so you mark that once on the story stick. Then you would use that as you're building your project to always use the story stick to to mark out where your your thing or your braces are. Here's one, and I just put a washer on the end of it so I can hook it hook it on the bottom of the project, and you can see the marks on there from the previous project, and I just. That way, I can get you know the both sides, front and back, all marked identically the same. Uh, here's an example of 
this one is a little more involved but this is the uh, this is from the kitchen cabinets I made a whole set of kitchen cabinets so this is the bottom part of the uh, here's the bottom the front so this is where uh, one cross piece would go and the second one and then the top one so there was a one big drawer two drawer three drawer and it showed where my other uh, braces were going to go so I used that for all of the cabinets and then I did the same thing with the upper cabinets uh, so I had that all marked out but I only marked it on this once and then I just used this to put up against the other boards and, and mark it off of here so that if, uh, if you've got a, any sort of a cabinet or things that's got multiple uh, times that you're going to have to mark the same thing the story stick is the best way to go um, I think that about does it uh, there are lay there are other measuring tools and layout tools for your machine calibrations and stuff they're more precision um, we can talk about that some other time but I think as far as all of that uh, so what do you need uh, you need a tape measure, of course. Uh, you need some sort of a marking knife, either whether it's a, uh, something like this or something a little fancier like that. Uh, a good square, something, something like this that's adjustable. Uh, sometimes you can't, you can get smaller versions of these, but sometimes that too, goes too far. Even at six inches, you need to be able to go down of course then you know I can use this as a marking gauge as well just with a pencil not with a I mean these these put a, a you know a scratch mark down there sometimes you don't want that or it doesn't need to be that precise that just a pencil mark is all you need so something like this uh, some kind of a compass uh, oh I forgot my these these are little homemade dovetail uh, Scratches. It's just a, a, a thicker board with a thinner one, and then I, I cut them off on the saw at the right angles. So this is an 8 to 1, a 6 to 1, and a 4 to 1. And what I mean by uh, those measurements, uh, dovetails were usually uh, one of those kinds of ratios. So you had so if we go out one, whatever, it could be inch, whatever, if it's one, but the same measurement up, two is one, two, three, four. So that's a one to four that determines that angle. And like I said, this distance isn't important as long as it's, whatever this is, it's four of the same going up. And so six to one, it'd be, be farther up and eight to one's even steeper. Um, so that's how they were determined and usually the, the the one to eight was the hardwoods and one to six was softwood uh, you'll see the one to four um, it, it seems to be more common these days people want to show off the dovetails um, originally that the dovetails weren't they're not made to show they're made for strength uh, it's a very strong joint and if you get too far out with your dovetail these tend to break off because the grain of the woods going this way that tends to break off uh, so one that's not quite so steep still forms the wedge that locks it in it still forms this wedge uh, but it isn't as prone to breaking on the edge. Um, so that's kind of little, we're going to do a session on just making dovetails uh, in the future. So I think that does it. I think I've covered it about it. I probably went on way too long again. Uh, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, we'll hope to see you soon.